In this review, we're looking at an update of a particularly complex model. It is the Liebherr MK88 4.1e. And as you can see, this is in an unusual color scheme. And that's because this is a special edition that was shown at the Baumo exhibition in 2022. Turning the box over, we can see that this is a Conrad model and it's 2123-01. Rushing the box onto the Weybridge and it's about three pounds, 15 ounces. And that's nearly 1.8 kilograms. The first thing to note is that the box has a sleeve on it. And that also encloses an instruction booklet, which we'll look at shortly. Without the sleeve, the box says model number 2123. So this box design is for the standard model. And when we lift the hinge lid and foam rubber, we can see the model. This updated version of the model has a new instruction book. And it's all clearly and nicely laid out. It does contain a full parts list, although the review model did not have the Liebherr flag that's shown in the parts list. To assemble the model, we'll mostly follow the steps in the assembly manual, but we'll start by raising the tower to a vertical position. And once that's done, there's a pin to insert, which locks it in place. There's some residual foam wrapping to remove and to stop a dramatic crane collapse, we'd better extend the outriggers. These just extend in the usual way and you wind down the pads to get some stability. The next task is to extend the telescopic tower upwards and just make sure the operator's not in his cab for his dramatic fall. There's a bit of stickiness in extending the tower to its full amount, probably due to paint thicknesses. But when it's fully extended, there's a small locking clip to put in. The next job is to connect up the guy ropes that control the angle of the jib. And these are already reeved up out of the box. You need to carefully unfold the ropes and take it to the top of the mast. And there you have to make a clip on connection. These particular parts are tough plastic, so they clip together. And a nice touch of the small temporary clips that Conrad uses to keep the ropes from getting tangled up. Once all that's done, you just need to correctly position the apparatus at the top. And then you're ready to operate the winch. It's operated by a key and it's got a nice positive brake action. Before fully unfolding the jib, we need to rotate the end section and we need to insert a key into the assembly winch in the tower. After that, you alternate the two winches to unfold the jib. At this stage, we can help the model's stability by inserting an extra piece of counterweight, and that just clips in at the back. With the jib extended, it has a great straight profile. On the review model, the reeving by Conrad out of the box wasn't quite right with some twisted ropes, but it was easy enough to take the rope off the top pulley and reverse it. The next task is to reeve up the rope for raising the cab. And there's a winch drum at the top of the tower. The rope gets taken down to the cab at the bottom and there's an eyelet where you put the rope through and then tie it on. One compromise on the model is that the rail for the cab is not telescopic like the real one. So it has to be clipped in place. And then you can have fun winching up the cab. With the only issue being there's not enough friction on the winch drum to act as a brake. The next job is to reeve up the hook, so we'll take some rope off the winch drum. And then we need to carefully thread it up and over the top of the tower. After that, the best thing to do is to put the rope straight through the hook. And then take the end of the rope to the end of the jib, where there is a tying off point. After that, a quick haircut keeps it all neat and tidy. And for our next trick, we feed the hook 
straight through the trolley, and then we can offer the trolley up to the jib. There we can clip it on, and it works because the trolley is actually made of stiff plastic, but there's enough movement in it so that it clips on reasonably easily. A change on this version of the model is a cover that clips over the winch to raise the cab, and for additional decoration, there are a pair of plastic Lee pair signboards. And if you locate them correctly, they clip on easily to the jib. To position the trolley where you want it, it's a bit of a hand job, as the trolley motor is non functional. Moving on, there's a clip on tool carrier which goes at the back of the crane. And additional detail is provided by handrails which push into preformed holes. Also, as is often the case with Conrad models, you have to add on the mirrors. And in this case, they are of the cheap, unsilvered variety. And finally, to complete the setup, there are plastic spreader plates, which go under the outriggers. For the detail we start underneath and basically things are quite simple with the modelling focused on functionality. The carrier cab has got the plastic mirrors and the windscreen wipers are formed by graphics. There's also a towing hitch and the e-version decoration looks attractive. That decoration continues down the side of the carrier and it certainly has a smart look. The wheels are plastic and reasonably detailed. And the simple outrigger beams are metal with chevron graphics. The pistons have visible screw threads and the pads and spreader plates are plastic. There's some nice modelling behind the cab with detailed textures and there's a large chrome exhaust which is different on this latest version of the model. Other deck textures are very good. The handrails on the model are metal and one thing you can see on the sides of the body are the holes where you put in the keys to operate the winches. One very nice detail is that all the mechanism is in place to raise the tower to a vertical position. And that also includes the winch drum. But as it's fixed to the same axle as the hoist winch, you can't really use it. This version of the model seems to be missing the winch that telescopes the tower. But the capacity board showing the luffing jib is a nice touch. The new style cab rail on this version is metal. At the back there are four non-removable wheel chocks and the tool carrier is a nicely modelled part. Another difference on this new version of the model is the cab and it has a very unusual opaque windscreen. Another new part on this model is the cover for the cab hoisting winch and it is a metal part. The luffing assembly is plastic with metal pulleys and the hook is also a metal part with small metal pulleys inside. The trolley is a simple plastic part with metal pulleys. And another simple part is the plastic trolley winch. This is a complex model and all of the engineered parts are well made. The jib is metal and all of the connecting parts are made precisely. And that all combines to give the jib a very nice profile. It is quite stiff to rotate the crane, but it is nice and precise. And a small feature on the model is the drop down access ladder. Fully erected, the crane is stable, although that wouldn't be true if you put any real load on the hook. It's also stable and can be posed over the side. One nice touch is that you can replicate the luffing jib of the real crane, and so you can copy the real crane angles of 15 degrees, 30 degrees, and 45 degrees. Fully erected, this is a big model, so let's do some dim checks. And fully luffed at the tip, it's about 46 inches or 118 centimeters. And with the jib horizontal, it's 28 inches or 71 centimeters. 
That's also measured a crane part end to end and it's about 38 inches or 96 centimeters. We've seen the model fully erected, so let's now reduce it down to a transport configuration. We've lowered the cab and the trolley needs to be moved to just past the first hinge position. After that, we reverse the erection procedure to return the jib to its folded state. And if you bear in mind that the real crane can fold itself up in about 15 minutes, the reality is that it takes far longer on the scale model. The trickiest part comes in telescoping the tower, and that's because you've got to continuously wind in the luffing winch, the hook winch, and the cab winch. And the only way to do this is in slow, painstaking steps. Once you've got it all folded up, you can put the outriggers in. And a nice touch on the model is that you can store the outrigger spreader plates. And there's a holder for them on each side of the model. If you go carefully, you can get the model into a good looking transport configuration. So let's try it out on the Cranes Etc. test track. It rolls along fine in a straight line, although not all wheels were fully grounded. But each axle does individually steer, so you can get very good turning angles. And so the model can have interesting poses. Putting the whole model on the Weybridge, and we find it's just about £3 exactly. And that is 1.36 kilograms. This is an attractive looking update of the MK88 model by Conrad. The original version of this model came out in 2010, and the revisions to it are relatively minor. There are some nice details and the model is interesting because of its complexity. It's also large when fully erected and overall it's very good. <laughs>